Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vega Conflict. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a quick run over of the patch notes for what happened yesterday before I take the time to go over the Altarian Rising event, which is essentially just an Altarian catch up event. Though I do find the prize store to be quite lacking in certain weaponry, so being a catch up event, it's. Well, I'll talk about that when we get to it. So, downtime release notes. Yeah, yeah, it's already happened, and we're just waiting for the minimum version push for most of the stuff, but there's still stuff that is active now that we can make use of. So, the August release is packed with, yeah, 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 it's always done like that. So, first up we have this little thing, which is described later, and what it is is it's a max claimable button. And what happens is, right now we currently have to click or tap and just repetitively do that to collect the prizes. However, after this update, we have we now have the ability to use buttons like this. And if we click and hold as it shows, it'll actually select all of the items we can buy. Or we can click to the amount that we want and then purchase them all at once. In most of our cases, we want to purchase all the boxes, so this is actually a fairly simple and easy thing. So we just click and hold for around two seconds, or one and a half seconds there, and we can collect all 30 of the boxes, or all 30 of whatever item we're after. Next up is the Plexus Carrier, however I'm not going to talk about it or its weapon at the current time. I'm going to actually talk about it with its debut event, so for now let's put that on the back burner. We have the events, so we have the monthly event for the farm for the Plexus Carrier. Okay, we have the mobilization following that, and that is during the Plexus Carrier upgrades, and Spectral MERS, level 1 through 4, and bolster the orator with spectral zealots level 4. Alright, so we're starting to get the first reusable items for the zealots. Well, as zealots. Decimation. Find elite upgrade materials in the yeah, 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 including brand new plex carriers, so that's just that one doesn't change anything. Okay. The event rerun. To be announced, keep an eye. Okay, so something else that we don't really need. New features, the carrier, the driver weapon for it. Okay, spectral mirrors and kinetic mirrors will be available this month in the m in the mobilization and the decimation, respectively. So we'll get the spectral mirrors in the mobilization, and we'll get the kinetic mirrors in the decimation, and then we will have the full damage pack with the mirrors. We will have energy, explosive, kinetic, and blight. At level 4, MERS have, yeah, 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 we can talk about them some other time. Uh, okay, next up is the Kinetic and Explosive Zealots. Kinetic Zealots will be released in September's mobilization. Alright, so we'll be able to get the Kinetic Damage Zealots in the mobilization. However, Explosive Zealots will be available in a future event. Okay, so we're going to have to wait on the Explosive ones. Well, we can discuss what event it could possibly wind up in. We'll do that after this, though. Uh, Fleet Commander Richard Goud specializes in Driver and Vulcan class weapons, boosting range by 800 meters, screen damage and kinetic damage by 15%, and bolstering kinetic resistances by 10%. When three Altarian holes are within each fleet, they gain plus four piercing with Driver and Vulcan weapons. I'm going to talk a bit about him, but let's continue on. Content changes. Two times sector travel speed. Okay. Before we go any further, most of the stuff on this list I have already checked into and it is live right now. We can view it, we can access it, and we can use it in the game as it is right now. So, two times sector travel speed for all ships, so everything moves quicker now. So, travel times are effectively halved with this update for anyone who doesn't have a jump ship. Dreadnoughts can now escort, and I have checked to make sure that they can. And the dreadnoughts can escort each other, and they can escort... Um, jump ships, so we can have them jump with a Javelin, a Harvester, or even the Marauder one, the Prophet. Uh, items in the event stores, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that we can do right now, and that's for the Marketplace, okay. Supply run fleets moved to planet, and that was actually for um, the number of targets that were spawning in the player sector. It was far too many, so they moved them in planet, so that's a decent change. Another thing, Performance issues were resolved, as with the bug fixes and things like that, and I can say that quite a lot of them were resolved. However, there are still some that I have noticed. However, they're not as bad. And finally, carrier field description clarification and support for no-coin offers, which are offers that just give you 
if I'm not mistaken, ships, tech, or certain things like that, but no coins, which means that they can cut the price of said items so it's much cheaper to purchase them. So I like that one. Uh, carrier field description clarification, that one we can actually show off real quick because it is just right here. Where's the Dominion? If we go to the modifiers tab now, we can actually see the support field and it'll tell you exactly what it does. And this just says a, uh, agility increase of 30% and I'm, I'm positive that that actually means 30% forward in, uh, thirty percent forward speed increase, a strafe speed increase, and rear speed increase all in one similar to what we have on the specials over here for, yeah right here, the harmonic one for the paladin. Was it boosting everything by 30% because it's an agility field? And the other one would be checking into the shops to be able to check to see if we can purchase multiple things. Okay, that's not in place yet unless it means elsewhere. Nope. Alright, so that portion of the update is still locked behind the minimum version push, it would appear. Unless it's actually live with... Okay, so it is live. It's just not in the store with all the store tabs and things like that. Okay. Okay, before we go any further, let's go ahead and let's hop back over to the notes, and let's talk about Fleet Commander Goud for just one moment. So, what does he boost? He only boosts driver and Vulcan weapons. Well, the primary thing with most weapons in the game lately that I see is the speed, the accuracy, and just an overall lack of homing weapons lately. We saw with the Wraith and the Hammer Missile... We had the Wraith with the Nova, which is a homing weapon, and we had the Hammer Missile, and it does kind of turn while it's in flight, but it doesn't turn quickly enough to make it something that's a guaranteed hit. And I think those are the actual are actually the only new homing weapons we've been given. Not counting any beam weapons or anything like that. But let's go ahead and let's just think about this for a minute. So they introduced a fleet commander that specializes with Altarian Vessels, with Piercing and Vulcan Weapons, Increased Screen Damage, and Increased Kinetic Damage, which is... I'm just gonna rip this Fleet Commander to pieces right here in front of all of you. First off, the bonuses are the dumbest thing that they could have done. The Kinetic Damage and the Increased Screen Damage was a mistake, because most of the Pharmacon ships, upon exiting phase, their screens become heavily resistant to kinetic damage, energy damage, and explosive damage. So limiting him to a faction for this bonus, which I actually love, to Altarians, which are, again, the weakest tier 7 faction, they've made a great mistake with making this fleet commander, and I think the time could have been better spent making a different fleet commander, or focusing on reworks, or looking into previous content and how it behaved, or in the very least just not releasing a fleet commander like this because it's just a dumb idea. Second, you gain 10% increased resistance to kinetic. Now, these are the general ones that apply to everything, so you get 800 meters additional range. If I'm not mistaken, you actually get 800 or 1000 from the thermonic filament level 2. 750, 750 right there. So right off the bat, you can just use the level 2 Thermonic Filament Blueprint, and it's going to be doing a better job than this new Fleet Commander will be. And that's something anyone has access to as a blueprint. All you have to do is just farm for the points during an event and buy it. So this isn't really relevant because that, that was only level 2. Level 3 actually boosts about 1,000 meters. So in turn, you get a better usage out of that one, and it boosts, boosts the weapon speed to 750, which, again, this fleet commander also lacks. He doesn't boost weapon speed. So on top of that, he's, he's focused with the Altarians, apparently, being built up against Pharmacon, even though the issue with them is their phasing abilities and the raw amount of damage output they have. So, in turn, he doesn't resolve anything, he actually adds to the problem. Because he's not boosting alien damage, he's not providing alien damage increases, he's providing kinetic damage increases and things like that, and these are things that, upon exiting phase, as I said, Pharmacon gain innate resistance to. So, you know, you hit them, 
and most of the time you, you're not going to be bothering them. Their shell is just extremely resistant to the damage type, so a wholly irrelevant aspect that was just completely unnecessary. And increased green damage, it could have been reserved for a Altarian focused fleet commander that boosts a full Altarian fleet with increased alien damage and just a bunch of other specials, but we'll talk about that another time. For now, my final thoughts on Richard Gaub before we move over to the Altarian Rising event is it seems like a waste of time to have taken so much time to produce a fleet commander which is going to be for a faction that in the first place is incapable of countering the faction that they're meant to counter. Even the two ships released under the RPS system can't really counter them because most of the time they're just outranged and that was one of the issues again I'm gonna make a full talk video a full video talking about the Altarians in depth similar to what I did with the rant late at night but it'll be during the day so I'll be more rational thinking, things like that, but I'll also be dropping the farming fittings and things like that for what Altarian ships you can use for what farming fleets against what Farmercon targets and whether they'll be good in various other situations and things like that. Please note right now that there aren't too many situations where I can actually say that the Altarians are better at farming than the Farmercon because they have weaker weapons, weaker shielding, we, they're just weaker overall, and they have around, well, they have the same repair time as their Pharmacon equivalent, even though their durability is lacking, the defense values are lacking, just about everything in them is lacking. I can't think of one single good thing that came from them that I cannot apply to another faction by taking the weapon they may have been provided with. Okay. That's enough of that. Let's go ahead and top over into the Altarian Rising to just Give me a second to quickly look through the prize list, and I'll do the recommendations. And the first thing I saw when I looked at the list was that most things were blueprint fragments with the, ex with the exception of the garbage truck. And th this goes for weapons as well, unless they're reusable items, most of the things are fragment blueprints. And they're also lacking a large number of shells, which for a catch-up event, they, they always screw this up with the catch-up events. They never, allow they never put all the shells available. They only give you one, one specific shell, despite the fact they give you all the resistors, all the armors, just about everything else, all the specials, just about anything that came with the faction is typically in the catch-up events, with the exception of the defense type, so, so much for being a catch-up event when it doesn't actually let you purchase the primary feature, which would be shells, to defend themselves. Now, on to the recommendations. Go ahead and pick up the Renaissance Battle Cruiser. I'm currently building a few of them up and testing them with Zeus's against Pharmacon targets to see how they synergize with one another and see whether it would be worth producing a mixed fleet involving two Renaissance, three Zeus's, and a Sovereign Carrier with an On Guard Overdrive. So the second one is going to be the Sovereign Carrier. And the reason for this is, well, it's the carrier, but you're going to want the on-guard overdrive to help boost weapon speed to ensure that you can hit the targets before they enter phase, because you want to be dishing pain out to them before they can actually phase out of existence. And you can literally do no damage to them while you're dying from damage over time. And that was another thing. I never went into detail why the garbage truck was so horrible, aside from just ranting about it. And what happens is... Its overdrive is activated via damage over time stacks, and the problem with that is most shields are meant to block the damage over time, so only a little bit will be applied, so it takes a while for the damage over time to stack up in comparison to the Zeus that actually activates via it being damaged directly. So, you know, as the more damage it takes up to a certain point, it'll activate the overdrive, and it will just ramp itself up to a new level, whereas the Zeus on the... the garbage truck on the other hand it it has to accumulate damage over time stacks which means that it has to be taking damage a lot more damage just to activate the same overdrive well and a similar overdrive and it's phase charge hacking it reduces it by 40 percent so whatever the current value is it reduced that by 40 percent but in most cases I've, I've still had issues with the pharmacon still being able to phase out quickly enough after dealing an extremely heavy amount of damage whereas I did very little in return and because of how the overdrive is activated, to apply the phase charge hacking, you have to impact the target. So it's not an area field or anything like that, which is another issue with the slow-moving, dumb fire weapons that they keep giving the Altarians and the other factions. They lack homing capabilities, and with ships like this, with the overdrive built up based on dumb fire weapons, you need the tracking weapons just to be able to hit the target 
so that you can apply the devalue. But then the amount of time that they're devalued is right up until they go into phase, because when they enter phase, as far as I'm aware, all debuffs are dropped. So, you know, you you only have a set amount of time upon impact to be able to do damage to them before they're going to essentially reset. It applies stasis. It gains resistance against a single damage type, which is a mistake and a waste of time. Overall, if I were to review the ships, which when I do, I will do a full talk through and I'll explain how to fix them, and they do need to be fixed. Second, it's, it gets a tiny boost of strafe, it gets recharge, things like that. Nothing major. Nothing that really needs to be discussed. Second is the Sovereign Carrier, and it, by all intents and purposes, is a carrier. By default, it boosts shield energy by 50%, which is an extremely beneficial thing for it, especially if you uh, match it with the... let's see here... the Repost Overdrive, because if you're going to be using this one the tank, the repost overdrive will be for you because upon it taking a set amount of damage underneath the shield and this I actually would like to have changed to it taking shield damage so it activates via the damage value on the shields because the shield value is always going to be taken greater than that of what's under the ship under the shield but it gives a 10% recharge uh, with no delay on top of the what 2% that the ship has by default boosting it up to 12% total I believe let's see here Recharge delay, 10 seconds, yeah, 2%. So it boosts up to 12% with that for, what, 3 seconds? Yeah, 3 seconds. That's another issue that I'd like to have addressed. The duration of the Altarian overdrives for their carrier, they're just, they're far too short most of the time. Or in the case of activation methods, they can be abused by your opponent so they'll never become active. Such as with the On Guard, because it requires, what, Three enemies, yeah, three enemies or more in the fire arc. Against NPC targets, that's just fine, but in PvP, that's the weaker of the two overdrives, and you'd be better off using the repost, and the repost also provides better benefits for the fleet, such as 100% shield defense upon it taking the 2,500 damage, 15% increased damage versus ships, and a 10% regeneration rate for all other ships in the fleet, so it also helps them regenerate their shields even faster as well. So it is just overall the better overdrive, but the duration is trash for it. And in comparison to the On Guard, which you're going to be using for most of the fleets I'm going to recommend, the damage type is wrong, the weapon speed is the best feature, the shield increase is a nice touch, but it could have been higher, the shield defense of the actual ship itself, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, that's a completely wholly irrelevant aspect. Uh, resistance, counter chain, counter pierce, okay. But it gains the recharge to live none, so it begins that 2% regeneration per second, but it doesn't provide anything else. It provides 100% defense, though. But that's about all that it does for the fleet. And in turn, the repost is the better overdrive, because you're going to be taking damage with the carrier, you're going to be activating it more often. Pardon me for just a minute, need to grab water real quick. But, that's about it for the recommendations for the ships. Let's go ahead and let's move on to their technology and weapons. Now, naturally, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the Sovereign Carrier. And we're going to recommend picking up one repost and one on guard, because depending on the targets, you're going to want to switch between the overdrives and use the different ones. Pick up level 1, level 2 resident armor, pick up plasma, deflector and shockwave, pick up a few plasma pierce resistors, a few kinetic pierce resistors, and a few explosive pierce resistors, pick up the level 1, 3, and 2 spectral shell in that order, go ahead and pick up the prime vulcan level 1, 3, and 2, but you're not going to fit any of the default prime vulcan on any of the fittings that I'm going to recommend in the future, you're going to actually be crafting the xeno versions. And speaking of Xeno versions, you're going to pick up the Cyclotron Beam Level 1 six times. And just a quick note for the development team, along with missing out on a, yet again another chance to offer the shells that are needed, you've passed up another opportunity to actually give out the Xeno Cyclotron Beam. And that is something that you guys have done over and over. Is I haven't seen the Xeno Cyclotron Beam in 
actually quite a while. I can't remember the last time I actually have seen it in an event. And with the fleet builds that I'm testing out, the Xeno Beam Capacitor and a mostly Xeno fitting for PvE farming for high level Pharmacon targets, with the Zeus and Renaissance, well, Garbage Truck mixed fleets, they actually use the Xeno Cyclotron to just deal that much more damage to the targets while they're being held out of phase to be able to force them out of phase, or in some cases, remove their ability to phase, period, and then destroy the ship underneath because they have no resistance. Okay, finally, we can recommend Mark Upgrade Boxes. So, for every one Renaissance you intend on building, and the fleets I'm going to recommend will most likely involve two Renaissance, three Zeuses, you're going to need five boxes per Renaissance. So if you're going to build multiple of this fleet, you're going to need five boxes per Renaissance. So if you're going to build up three fleets worth, you're going to have to buy all 30 boxes. Pardon me. So you're looking at, essentially, a hefty price. And the same with the Sovereign Carrier. If you intend on using more than one, increase the number of repost and on-guard overdrives that you purchase. Again, one for one ratio, so you can trade out the carrier's overdrives whenever you need to. So, if you're farming one target and you need to trade it out, or if you want to specialize the fleet towards a certain target, you can change the field out like that. But, in the case of the Sovereign Carrier, you're going to want to purchase 10 boxes for every one Sovereign you intend on building, because it requires twice as many of the typical boxes to mark upgrade a carrier. And that just about cuts it for this video, everybody. There isn't too much else to recommend because most of their things I just don't use, and most of the time I use other things. Okay. That is incorrect. I have to correct that statement real quick. I can recommend picking up the face solenoid because it, it works well with any driver weapon because the weapon speed increase and the shield bypass. However, again, with most of the other stuff I'm going to go through, I'm going to do a complete Altarian video. I'm going to recommend reworking every single item, and I'm going to talk about potential reworks and how they could be changed and how they would behave in combat. But go ahead and pick up Phase Solenoid 3, 1, then 2, and you're primarily going to be using level 3, and I know that it has a hefty shield, de uh, shield value decrease of 20%, but you can actually mitigate that with Fleet Commander Tatiana Domina, and I have a suggestion for kicks as well for the fleet commanders and things like that. If a fleet commander even so slightly ties into the potential build for a featured event, in this case, the Altarian Rising event, ensure a fleet commander of equal relevancy is always offered in a catch-up event. In this case, Miss Tatiana Demina, because she boosts shield strength, she boosts cannon weapons, and she boosts overall weapon damage well, health damage, actually, by 15%. So she is just an all-around fleet commander for any type of cruiser that uses cannon weapons, any ships that use shields, and things like that. Other than that, everybody, that's it. We've gone, we've gone through, we've talked about more than enough this time around. The event begins in one hour, so this video should be posted right around the time it actually launches, so that will actually be pretty good. But there is plenty more to talk about, but tomorrow is going to be dedicated to concept ideas. And there was one that I was supposed to release weeks ago, but it just kind of got put on the back burner while I was working on other stuff. But it'll come out bright and early tomorrow morning. And the second concept idea will come out in the evening. But that's going to be it for now, everybody. If you have a different prize recommendations list for lower levels and things like that... Oh, I am going to hit the targets, and I'm going to check to see what they consist of and show them off. So you can get a base idea of what you're going to be up against before you go into the fight. But that's going to be it. And as I was saying before, if you have any recommendations for fittings, things like that you may want to see try out, go ahead and let me know and I'll see what I can do about testing them. Just like what I did with the Glance Cannon build with the Bastion Cruiser. It was interesting, to say the least, and I could see a few practical uses for it, primarily as a support ship, though, due to the range. And as for some other aspects of the game, well, we can discuss them in future videos. Because there is plenty to discuss that I want to in the next few weeks, basically. But, be safe out in the void, everybody. Happy hunting, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.